and presents the 1988 Final Four. Highlights of the NCAA Basketball Championship. And welcome once again to ESPN's Look Back at the Final Four. I'm Bob Lee, and this time we take a look back at 1988. Certainly a lot of history, the 50th Final Four in Kansas City. History was in the air for the Duke Blue Devils. It was their second visit in three years to the Final Four. There was Arizona, the team that had blitzed through the West. Oklahoma, the team with the outstanding offense, and yes, a defense to match this time around. And there was the long shot, Kansas, an hour's drive away out in Lawrence, Kansas, with the player of the year, Danny Manning, with all the rumors swirling about the immediate future of its head coach, Larry Brown, and lots of emotion on the side of Kansas. Just a second, we'll take a look at the semifinals. Duke and Kansas, a rematch of the game they played in the Final Four in Dallas in 1986. And the other semifinal, the one that all us experts in Kansas City said should have been the championship game. And the winner, of course, would surely be national champion, Arizona and Oklahoma. We'll take a look at Saturday's games right after this. The opening semifinal was a rematch. Favored Duke, 28 and 6, against Kansas, which had lost 11 games during the regular season, including one to Duke in overtime. Larry Brown's Jayhawks had also lost to Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils in the semifinals of the 1986 Final Four. But Kansas had one edge in playing only 40 miles from its own campus, and another in Danny Manning, whose layup made the score 7-0. Duke went scoreless for more than four minutes into the game. The Atlantic Coast Conference champions missed their first five shots, failed to score their first nine trips down the court. Kansas, led by the All-America Manning, was as hot as Duke was not. Scooter Berry's nifty pass paid off when Manning tipped in the rebound, 9-0. Milt Newton, a reserve until senior Archie Marshall was injured during the regular season, was almost as impressive as Manning in the first half. Newton made five of his first seven shots, and his driving layup four and a half minutes into the game stretched Kansas' lead to a stunning 14-0. With almost five minutes gone, Duke finally scored. Sophomore Ala Abdelnavi's hook shot ending the drive. Let's go, Blue Devil! Let's go, Duke! Let's go, Duke! Manning had suffered through the most frustrating game of his college career in the 1986 semifinal, held by Duke to four points then, but barely five minutes into this game, Manning jammed home his fifth and sixth points. Kansas widened its lead to 18-2. Duke's All-America Danny Ferry, who had missed his first three shots, hit two baskets in a row, cutting the Jayhawk lead to 12 points. But if Duke had hopes of an early comeback, Kansas dashed them with a surge of six straight points. The last two on Chris Piper's drive, giving the Jayhawks an 18-point lead, their biggest of the game. But Duke wasn't about to give up. The Blue Devils made six of their next seven shots, including three driving layups in a row for Kevin Strickland, the senior guard. Duke fans, who had seen their team rally from far behind to beat Kansas in their regular season meeting, sensed another comeback when a few seconds before halftime, Quinn Snyder rolled in a layup that cut the deficit to 11 points, hardly an insurmountable margin. After all, in the East Final, Duke had come from 10 points down to eliminate Temple, the country's top-ranked team. But the second half started like the first. Kevin Pritchard's drive triggered a burst of eight straight Kansas points, and Duke missed its first eight shots after the intermission. Milt Newton, despite being guarded by Billy King, Duke's defensive wizard, was well on his way to a 20-point performance. And if that wasn't enough to dismay Blue Devil fans, Danny Manning, who led both teams with six block shots and ten rebounds, was on his way to a 25-point game. Duke's Danny Ferry scored six straight points to reduce a 16-point deficit to 10 with 12 minutes to play. With eight minutes to go, the difference was down to five points. And the Blue Devils and their fans were up 
Newton quieted the Duke crowd momentarily with a dazzling behind-the-back pass that set up a driving layup for Chris Piper. But Kansas still couldn't relax. Not with a mere seven-point lead with five minutes left. Duke's defense tightened. Kansas poise wavered. And the Blue Devils seemed to be on the brink of turning the game around. Quinn Snyder set up Kevin Strickland for a fast-break duck that reduced the Jayhawks' lead once again to five points. Then Danny Ferry, with a steal and a breakaway, lifted Duke to within three points of Kansas with four minutes still on the clock. Now it was Kevin Pritchard's turn for heroics. The Jayhawks sophomore guard tossing up an improbable shot that managed to fall through. Kansas again led by five. But with two and a half minutes to go, Duke once more sliced the margin to three. Snyder connecting from the baseline. But the Blue Devils never got any closer. They had a chance when Pritchard missed a layup, but Manning rose to the occasion as he had all game, taking the rebound for the basket that destroyed Duke's comeback. Kansas made seven foul shots in the last two minutes and wrapped up a 66-59 victory that propelled Larry Brown in his third Final Four in only seven years of college coaching into the championship game for the second time. Only two months early, Kansas was 12 and eight. But now, Brown was one victory from his first NCAA title and Kansas second.